Today on Sports Central, we'll be going over our next schedule preview this 2020 offseason, and it will be over the Indiana Hoosiers. This is a team that went 8-5 in 2019, and they were quite a surprise team in the Big Ten as well. I did not expect them to get to eight wins a single bit, but nonetheless, how are they going to do in 2020 as we're going over here today? We're going to be going over a few players this team will be losing, who they're going to be returning, and also going over their schedule for the first time this offseason. So starting off with the games that Indiana has had since November, of course, they, I mean, they kind of... They flopped a little bit down the stretch, but nonetheless, it was a super good season either way. Uh, but they did beat Northwestern on November 2nd, 34-3. They lost to Penn State by a touchdown, 27-34, to and certainly that score, uh, and considering Penn State at the time was certainly in the top 10, and they were a really good team, uh, that was actually a really well-played game by Indiana, keeping it to a touchdown game. They lost to Michigan, though, the next week, 14-39, to so that game wasn't near as close. Uh, they did beat Purdue the next week on the road, 44 to 41. They also lost to Tennessee in the Gator Bowl, 22 to 23. But overall, that was a really uh, tightly contested and a tough game against a Tennessee team uh, that certainly was great down the stretch. They were uh, probably the most improved team over the season, no doubt. So for the trend for Indiana in 2019, between September and October, they were six and two, and they were two and three through November in the postseason. So that was uh, that was a little bit tough the way that they ended. Of course, starting six and two, or actually that'd be seven and two with that Northwestern win. Uh, certainly, Indiana was having their eyes on a really good bowl game, but of course, I mean that November was very tough for them, no doubt about it, with Penn State and Michigan. Here's some key points from Indiana heading into this offseason. Their starting quarterback, Peyton Ramsey, is transferring away, so he will not be starting at quarterback this year. Instead, it will be Michael Penix likely to take over the quarterback position. And uh, just so you know, Peyton Ramsey had just over 2,400 yards of passing, 13 touchdowns and 5 interceptions. And then Michael Penix had 1,300 passing yards as well as 10 touchdowns and four interceptions. So both of those quarterbacks got a decent amount of time. Of course, Peyton Ramsey was... Now, pretty much the full-time quarterback, but Michael Penix did get in a decent amount. They returned their top running back in Stevie Scott, and he had just over 1,000 yards as well as 11 touchdowns, so that's going to be a really good return. They also returned their top wide receiver, Wap Filler. Sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong, but he had just over 1,000 yards as well with five touchdowns. They returned their tight end, Peyton Hendershot, but actually recently, just a couple of days ago, he was arrested uh, due to something. I'm not sure what it was, uh, but he was arrested, so that could affect his future at Indiana. We'll have to see. Stay tuned for more about that. Uh, but yeah, Peyton Hendershot was a huge part of this Indiana team last season as he had over 600 yards with four touchdowns. Uh, they also returned the second wide receiver, Ty, which had over 600 yards and three touchdowns. Uh, but they did lose their third wide receiver, Nick Westbrook, which he had just over 300 yards. So really, uh, losing Westbrook is a bit of a loss, but not near as bad as it would be if he was the if he was the first wide receiver or first running back. They do lose two offensive linemen, two linebackers, and one in the secondary. So they do lose uh, three on defense. So that really isn't all that bad. I mean, you'll see three to four losses on most uh, teams on the defensive side. Uh, but yeah, moderate amount of losses for Indiana. Really, I mean, uh, if they if they were to return Peyton Ramsey next season, I think this Indiana team would have a really good chance of being a big dark horse in the Big Ten and possibly getting up to nine, maybe even ten wins. Like I'm not even joking. You like this Indiana team uh, is returning most of their most of their key players. I mean, when you return your top running back in Stevie Scott, who had over a thousand yards, and then Wap had over a thousand yards as well. I mean. Uh, yeah, this Indiana team has got a ton of potential next season. And losing their quarterback, Peyton Ramsey, that they had uh, for all of this season, that is a bit of a concern. But nonetheless, chances of an even better 2020 season, I think the chances are actually quite high. It would not surprise me a single bit to see Indiana get up to nine wins this season uh, throughout the entire season, uh, no doubt about it. But yeah, looking at their schedule for the first time, they start off the season at Wisconsin. That's in Madison, and that's going to be a tough game to start off the season with. Uh, certainly, I mean, having to play a Wisconsin team that looks to be uh, possibly a cultural playoff contender in 2020, that would be a huge game if Indiana were to win that one. Nonetheless, I mean, otherwise, September is pretty easy. Western Kentucky, Ball State, and UConn are in the next three weeks. Then you got Maryland and Rutgers to start off October as well as a bye week on October 3rd. So really, this, easy, this first part of the schedule, other than Wisconsin, is actually quite easy. It's the second half of the schedule that really is going to crank up the heat. you got Michigan State on October 24th, 
Penn State on the 31st, Ohio State on the 7th of November. And so yeah, those three weeks right there should be pretty challenging, except Michigan State. I mean, they're kind of iffy, but yeah, uh, Penn State and Ohio State will be two very tough games. And then you got Illinois the next week, Michigan on the road in the big house on the 21st, and then Purdue to finish off the season once again on the 28th. And here's what I'm kind of expecting. I'm gonna say uh, my three guaranteed wins for Indiana right now, Western Kentucky, Ball State, and Maryland. I'm not going to say UConn quite yet. I easily could, but with it being a road game, who knows? Uh, so I'm not going to put that in green quite yet. And I don't have any projected losses for Indiana. I think they've got a chance in every one of these games up here. Uh, but nonetheless, your record estimation for Indiana will be seven and five to nine and three. It would not surprise me a single bit to see them go nine and three, though. Like um, this schedule definitely shapes out for that. I mean, your three losses, probably Penn State, and Ohio State, would be on that list, uh, or first named on that list, of course. And I mean, that third loss it could be Michigan uh, and then could be Wisconsin. Who knows? I think they'll, I do think though that they'll upset either Wisconsin, Penn State, Ohio State, or Michigan. I'm not sure which one yet, uh, but certainly I think they're going to upset one of them this season. I mean, Indiana's got potential to do that. And they've also got the experience too. They're going to be a pretty experienced team next season too. Uh, they're going to have a lot of seniors and. Yeah, once again, this Indiana team could be a scary one going into the 2020 season. They certainly could pull off some pretty big upsets, too. But nonetheless, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below on Indiana. Uh, thank you guys all for sticking around. Thanks for watching as well. If you like what you see here and want to see more, show some support. Uh, but yeah, once again, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more from All Sports Central, and I will see you all later.